we tend to see a lot more ulcer cases now and I think a lot of it is it's something we're looking for more and more, particularly in our performance horses. Um, I think it's probably something that's always existed but has been made worse obviously by management practices these days. Um, and also we're asking more and more of our horses and owners are more and more on the ball about looking at reasons why their horses are not performing to the level that we would expect. Uh, we see all sorts of horses with ulcers, from race horses to performance horses, through to horses that work at a lower level, so things like our happy hackers and even some of our companion horses still are at risk of gastric ulcers. It's really important to appropriately diagnose ulcers and the only way of definitively doing so is by gastroscopy. So actually popping an endoscope down there and having a wee look at the stomach and seeing what's going on uh, both in the squamous region and in the glandular region of the stomach. There are other tests that historically have been used, so things like blood tests and also faecal tests, but they are pretty unreliable. The only way of knowing for sure is by actually looking to see what's there. Uh, we have a range of available treatments for gastric ulcers um, and gastric glandular disease and they vary from oral emetrazole, injectable emetrazole and other medications such as mesoprostol and depending on clinically how the horse presents we will make the appropriate decision based on that. Treatment for gastric ulcers is also very heavily reliant on appropriate management. So the biggest thing that we look at is stress in the horse um, and obviously managing its diet. Now currently looking at the research there is no link between glandular disease and diet. However we would still recommend feeding appropriate levels of fibre and reducing cereals in the diet. Uh, stress, obviously keeping it to a minimum as much as possible and current recommendations particularly for glandular disease is giving the horse a couple of rest days during the week. Um, high levels of fibre are important, particularly for squamous disease, to provide that fibre mat. And we often will recommend feeding a two litre equivalent of chaff 20 to 30 minutes prior to riding just to provide that protective barrier there. Uh, minimising cereals can also help minimise acid damage to the stomach. Independent research has shown that alfalfa is a great feed for horses with ulcers. It's rich in calcium, it's also abundant in essential amino acids, both of which act as buffers to acidity in the digestive system. Studies have shown that chewing alfalfa takes three times as long as eating cereal-based feeds. This means that the horse produces more saliva, saliva contained by carbonate which neutralises acidity in the digestive system. So all of Denji's pure alfalfa-based feeds are ideal for horses with ulcers because they provide natural buffering in the digestive system. However, if you're choosing between alfre oil and healthy tummy, alfre oil is the higher calorie feed that you'd need to feed alongside a balancer, whereas healthy tummy is the complete option. If your horse is fussy and you need a more palatable option, then performance fibre is the feed for you. Combining grass with alfalfa and a lovely spearmint oil flavour, it really encourages horses to eat up. Some horses can be in a lot of digestive discomfort when they have gastric ulceration. For those, we have a pelleted fibre option. You can either feed them dry as a pelleted fibre or we can soak them to make them softer and easier to chew. And it's just more sympathetic to the digestive system. The pelleted fibre formats that we have include alfalfa pellets as well as alfa beet. Alfa beet combines sugar beet with alfalfa, so you get some benefits of the buffering potential of the alfalfa, but you also get a really digestible fibre source in the form of the sugar beet. This is a great way to add extra condition and promote weight gain in horses with ulcers. The pure alfalfa pellets, you get the maximum buffering from the alfalfa, and they can be fed alongside a grass chop like meadowgrass with herbs to help improve the amount of buffering the feed is giving.